Hello everyone, and welcome to this AstroPy tutorial. My name is Micah, and in this video, we will be going over light curve modeling. The ability to model light curves is an incredibly useful tool for astronomers, and we can learn much about the universe by studying a star's brightness over time. In this tutorial, I will show you how to model a simple light curve with matplotlib, and in the process, we will see how this tool can be used to detect extrasolar planets. Okay, so I've got my coding space all up and ready to go, and if you look over here to the left, I've got this folder called wasp12b, and in this folder is all the data we'll be working with. Um, so this is a series of FITS files, all of uh, the same region of sky over a period of time, and we're going to be focusing on the star wasp12b. So basically what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to perform aperture photometry on that star for each one of these FITS images, and then we're going to plot that uh, to see how the aperture sum changes over time. Um, so to start off, what we're going to need to do first is we're going to need a list that has all the names of those files. And now you could do this by hand, but we have almost 300 files here, so that would take uh, more time than I'm willing to put into this. So. Let's go over here into our Jupyter Notebook. <clears throat> First, we're going to import uh, our FITS tool. Then we're going to define an empty list called FITS files. Now we're going to get a little creative here. If you see, all of these uh, files are in the folder wasp12b, so we need to, need to make sure to call that in the file name. And then each, uh, each name is wasp12b and then a number and then bsdf.fits. So what I'm gonna do um, is I'm going to do a for loop here for i in range, and then we see we start at 0, 0, 0, 0040. So for i in range 40 to 100, counting by one, we're going to do fitsfiles.append and we're gonna do an F string, F wasp 12B, there's our folder, then forward slash wasp 12B underscore zero, 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 and then I, and you'll see our I is gonna be from 40 to 100. And so that's gonna take care of the first um, 60 of these files. And then uh, oh, of course we gotta put the BSDF dot fits. Okay, so you can see how if you're familiar with for loops, and if you're not, you should get familiar with them, this is going to create a list of all of these fits files from 40 to 100, or from 40 to 99 actually, just because of the way Python works. Okay, so then we're going to need to take care of the rest of these. So once we get to 100, we'll just do a second for loop for i in range 100 to 270, counting by 1, we'll do fits files dot append, then another f string wasp 12b wasp 12b underscore, and now we're going to do just two zeros instead of three zeros. then i underscore bsdf dot fits. <clears throat> so of course, if you're uh, using the data that I'm using, and I'll include a link in the, in the description so that you can if you want to, you can just copy this exactly. But, but if you're using your own data, you're gonna have to get creative with these for loops. Um, so preferably, you know, you're gonna want all of your fits files to have a similar name, and hopefully they will, because if they all have different names, then you're probably gonna be looking at doing something like this by hand. Uh, but if you're following along, just keep doing what I'm doing. And so just to see what's going on, we'll do print fits files. And here we see we've got a list with all of our fits files. Now next, we're going to have to get the image data from all of these files. So let's define another empty string. We'll call it fits data. And then another for loop for fits file in fits files. File data equals fits dot open 
fits file. And then our image data is equal to file data zero dot, oops, just one zero dot data. Uh, okay. And then let's do fits data dot append image data. And we'll print that. We'll just print the first five so that it doesn't look too messy, but just so we can see what's going on. Okay. And you can see that took a long time to run on my computer. That's because well, I didn't have enough room on my SSD, so I'm storing all this on a hard drive and uh, well, hard drives are slow. So if you can do this on an SSD, highly recommend it so that you're not waiting full minute for something to run. Anyways, you can see here that we've got a, a list with the image data from each one of these FITS files. All right, so next we're going to uh, actually perform the aperture photometry. So if you remember from our previous video, we're gonna import photutils.aperture circular aperture then we're going to define a position uh, so I happen to know the position of wasp12b in this image and so I know the coordinates for it uh, if you have your own data and there's a star you're wanting to work with you'll just have to find that either through the DAO star finder which we went over in a previous video or you can use uh, SAO image DS9. I'll include a link to that in the description. You can just find the star by hand. Uh, but you're gonna want to define the position of this, the star that you want to model. So for me, that's gonna be 2401.93 and 2086.15. And those should be brackets, not parentheses. Let's fix that. Oh my gosh. Okay. Excellent. Now our aperture is going to equal circular aperture position and let's do a radius of 10. So from photutils dot aperture, now we're going to import Aperture photometry. We're going to define an empty list called star data. And then for file in fits data, star data dot append aperture photometry file aperture and then uh, you know, this star data is stored as a table, and so the column that we want is aperture sum. So let's go ahead and print that just to see what we're working with. And again, this is probably going to take some time because I'm working on a hard drive. Oh, never mind. That one was quick. 2.7 seconds. Okay, but here we see we've got a list then with all of the aperture sums. Excellent. So really all that's left to do now is to plot that data. So let's go ahead and import our matplotlib dot pyplot as plt. We'll do plt dot plot star data. And uh, I'm gonna plot this as a O so that we don't have the lines connecting the dots. I just wanna see the dots. And then we'll do a Y label aperture sum and we'll go ahead and do an X label even though we're not really plotting uh, any X data but we'll just do that as time to remind us that this is the aperture over time I'll do plt dot show and I'm realizing my mistake here okay so let's run that and there we go. So we can see this is the light of WASP-12. Um, uh, so WASP-12 is the star. Uh, and then 
this right here is the transit of WASP-12b, which is a hot Jupiter. So we can see that the star is normally about this bright, this planet passes in front of it, and then uh, when the planet clears the star, uh, the star goes back to about its original brightness. Um, this time here is obviously not in any units, just because we didn't define that. If you want to get fancy, you know, you can try and put the Julian date in there or something. Uh, but for the purposes of this video, I just wanted to show you how to plot the sum, uh, the aperture sum. Well, thank you so much for watching. This was a well-requested video. I know a lot of people were needing help with light curve modeling, and I hope this gives you a good place to start. Uh, so I want to give a huge thank you to Dr. Christian Draper of Utah Valley University for helping me with this project. I could not have done it without him, and I will see you all in the next video.